What's up everyone, it's your boy NoranRad89 here bringing you a special ranking video today voted on by members of my Discord. I'm going to be doing a Star Wars ranking video today. All the franchise films ranked from worst to best in my opinion. This isn't the right list by any means, this is just my personal opinion. I would love to hear from all of you, so leave your comments in the comment section down below telling me your list. We could have some healthy cinema debates, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. Roll it. So we have 11 franchise films spanning many decades and many generations, but of course there has to be a bottom one, and coming in at number 11 for me is going to be The Last Jedi. Definitely an ambitious Star Wars film. Ryan Johnson really strived to do something different and really brought his creativity to the limelight in this movie. It just didn't serve the sequel trilogy very well because it ignored a lot of the stuff that J.J. Abrams was trying to set up in Force Awakens as far as character arcs and character development. Ryan Johnson kind of ignored a lot of that, kind of made Snoke uh, basically a like worthless villain and just a lot of the stuff in the movie just didn't grab me. It visually looks really good. This is probably one of the best Star Wars looking films by far, but as far as content and grabbing me and making me interested in the characters, this film didn't do it for me. So if I want to watch a film that looks good, a Star Wars film that looks great, this is the one. But if I want to be more connected and more entertained by it, I'm definitely going to go to one of the other Star Wars films for sure. Coming in at number 10 is going to be The Phantom Menace. And this is definitely one that edged out The Last Jedi for me because I feel like George Lucas had a more cohesive story that he went with in this film. And you could definitely feel it as it goes on from beginning, middle to end. And it also introduces one of the greatest characters ever really in the Star Wars franchise, Darth Maul. He really became part of the Clone Wars TV series. He was part of the movies and he's even in the solo film. So Darth Maul became a very influential character in the Star Wars universe. We also get some really good acting in this film too from Liam Neeson and Ewan McGregor playing Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi there too. Their character development on screen, you could definitely feel it for sure. So their chemistry really makes this film work for me and I'm more entertained and more grabbed by this film. So I definitely have more rewatch value in my mind for this film than Last Jedi. So that's why Phantom Menace is landing here at that number 10 spot. My number nine pick is Definitely going to be probably a controversial one, but this film didn't really hit hard for me when it came out. And number nine for me is going to be The Force Awakens. It was definitely a cool film introducing us to new characters, Ray, Finn, Poe, and BB-8 and all those kind of people. But it just felt too much like a copycat film of New Hope for me. Like just the storyline, a lot of the way it was designed in the beginning, middle, and end, the arcs and everything, it felt a lot like New Hope. And it just, I want to watch a film like that, I'd rather watch New Hope. And that's the problem with Force Awakens, is it really, it looks really good, the graphics are great, and like I said, like it's very entertaining and it's funny, but it just feels so much like New Hope, and I think New Hope is a better film and I'm more connected with those characters, and because I grew up on those films, that might be like a nostalgia thing for me. But for me, I lean more towards that. So Force Awakens just kind of didn't really do it for me. It didn't hit as hard as some other people, like it did for some other people. So sitting here at my number nine spot is going to be The Force Awakens. Number eight is going to be Attack of the Clones. And I really do like this film. Some nostalgia might play a part in this film because I saw this film with my best friend in the theaters and I was thoroughly enjoyed by every moment in this film from beginning, middle to end. I liked the kind of intro story, an origin story of the Clone Wars, showing us the Genosians, Count Dooku and all their side, and then showing us like Obi-Wan and them finding out about the clone army. It's kind of like a little detective investigation story. It feels a lot like some of the Jedi books that I used to read about Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon back in the day and the little adventures they would get on, like get into, but it's Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi and they have to split up in this movie and sometimes the middle part, a lot of people will talk crap about that and it kind of takes a long time, but I don't mind seeing Anakin develop that relationship with Padme. And then we conclude it all off with an awesome 
Geonosius battle or a Geonosian battle in the arena with Jedi Geonosians everywhere just battling each other and we also get to see Yoda and a lightsaber duel for the first time as he fights Count Dooku so there's a lot of memorable moments in this film and that's why it sticks with me pretty hard and I've rewatched this one a lot so that's why Attack of the Clones beats out those other ones lower on the list for me so sitting here comfortable at number eight is going to be Attack of the Clones. Coming in at number seven is going to be the solo film, and I think this was a great film. I was really happy with this. When they did Rogue One and they did the solo film, I was very, I enjoyed those films because I wasn't, didn't need like trilogy connections or anything like that, like a major trilogy or a sequel or nothing like that. I was kind of more interested in just the small time, like Star Wars, like little snippet stories. Like it was cool to find out stuff like that, and the solo film definitely delivered it for us. I like the actors they got to play young Lando, Kira. We get L337, who's a very iconic droid. I think her performance was very good in this film. So it has so much to offer. And when I watched the solo film, it made me feel like a child again. Like when I saw New Hope, like I was so like entertained and like kind of on the edge of my seat, like on the ride for them. And that's why I really liked it. It didn't feel like a copycat of New Hope, but it made me feel like I was watching the first like New Hope again. And like, especially that scene when they're in the Millennium Falcon, traveling through the Maelstrom, trying to get free and like just their connection, their chemistry on screen. You can really feel it. I like Enfys Nest in this movie. Like basically all the characters in this movie are pretty good. It's just, we have a kind of a weak lackluster villain at first, but then once we get the reveal at the end and all that kind of stuff, it kind of does a little bit better with that landing spot with Kira and finding out who she's working for. So Solo sitting very comfortable here at my number seven spot. Number six is going to be the most recent installment in the Star Wars franchise, and that's going to be Rise of Skywalker. I definitely think Rise of Skywalker is the best of the sequel trilogy films that we've gotten so far. It really does suck, though, that they all kind of feel like separate movies. It doesn't feel like a very cohesive trilogy, like a beginning, middle, and an end part. You know what I mean? It kind of feels very lackluster and just like jumbled around. But I feel like Rise of Skywalker did it the best of what we got from the sequel trilogies. And the real reason for that is because Kylo Ren's character arc, I think he's the most stable character throughout the three films and the payoff for his arc in the last film is really good his character definitely saved this film for me it's also another very good looking star wars film for sure last jedi and rise of skywalker probably have some of the best special effects and like actual visual like look like shots where it's like that cinematography and those shots look like wallpaper worthy like those are amazing kind of shots and everything but for me Rise of Skywalker did it the best, even though it feels like if it was two separate movies, it would have been better. If we could have got the Rise of Skywalker split into two with like 20 minutes extra to develop the characters, I think it would have been a better two films instead of just the one that we did get. But still, Rise of Skywalker, I do enjoy and had a good time with it in the theaters. So it sits here at the number six spot. Now we are here at the top five and before we get to the top five if you like the videos and the content that I've been putting out consider dropping a like and hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all the videos I post. Now let's get down to it with my number five pick is going to be A New Hope the film that started it all that brought us Star Wars for the first time introducing us to characters like Luke, Leia, Han and Chewie and 3PO and R2 it's such an iconic, very important classic film. It's a lot of the graphics and some of the story stuff might be dated, especially when you come into like now, because these films stretch over so many generations and so many decades. So a lot of the Star Wars films now have so much more better graphics and just more stuff to offer that way. But this film still is powerful in its character development and the way that it takes you on this journey with these characters. And it's such a good family film like it really has something to offer everybody like you can watch this with your kids you can watch this with your mom your dad or your wife like it's just a really great film that has so many important lessons to teach everybody and like I said it has so many iconic moments as well giving us a lot of 
character's appearance for the first time, like Darth Vader, who's probably one of the best villains in cinema of all time. We get, like I said, some epic standoffs, great, great like actual space battles that were done with miniatures and everything. So it's some really cool practical effects and a movie that was definitely ahead of its time for sure. So New Hope sitting here at my number five spot. Coming in at number four is going to be Revenge of the Sith, the conclusion of George Lucas's prequel trilogy. Revenge of the Sith is definitely a very great and powerful movie in this franchise, giving us Anakin Skywalker and showing us his fall into becoming Darth Vader and the dark side. We get some really epic battles in this film and it has some of the best, just some of the best action throughout the whole movie like revenge of the sith is one of those movies that from the beginning it grabs you all the way to the end it is action-packed it's got some of the best lightsaber dueling in it that final battle with anakin and obi-wan much respect to hayden christensen and ewan mcgregor they put a lot of effort into learning that stuff and their stunt doubles that lightsaber battle came out perfect and it was something that was teased for a very long time and we knew it was coming but it, it ended up being even better than what most people imagined it could be. We also get Yoda fighting Emperor Palpatine, so it's just really great stuff. Like, oh, so many like amazing moments in this film. And that's why Revenge of the Sith is such a powerful movie, even though it's got some, there's some weird writing in it, and there's some connection scenes with like crying and some of the characters that it's kind of cheesy and kind of like B-movie status, but everything else in this film is just so powerful. And when I saw this in the theaters, like it was like a monumental, really important film. Like, and it just, I remember everybody screaming, yelling, being so excited. Like George Lucas really had a clear vision when he started his prequel trilogy. And I think that's why they came out a little better than the sequel trilogy is because he clearly had a destination when he started Phantom Menace and then went to Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. George Lucas knew what he was doing the whole time and it very much shows in those three films. So Revenge of the Sith sitting here at my number four spot. Now we're here at the top three and coming in at number three. I can't argue anybody that has this at the number one because I've seen most people's list and this is most people's number one. But my number three is going to be Empire Strikes Back. The second film in the original trilogy definitely diving more deep into these characters that we love, giving us more background story on Han, where we get to meet Lando and see his relationship with Chewie and all them, and what became of them. We get Boba Fett's introduction in this film. Darth Vader is a more central character as well in this movie, where he's stalking them and really hunting them down. We also get Luke meeting Yoda for the first time and finally getting to meet his Jedi Master who's going to finish his training and teach him the ways of the Force. It's just so many moments like that that just grab you in this film. There's a lot of epic one-liners in this movie and just like the Hoth battle in the beginning. Like it has so many parts in this movie that just grab you and so many good looking set pieces and practical effects that they did and built for this movie. The Wampa design is really great too. The ships, the Imperial walkers, like there's so many important epic parts in this movie and a lot of people love this film and it is most people's number one or number two and I can't argue that at all because this is pretty much like a perfect Star Wars film for sure. These top three for me are like hard tens, like I'd watch them any day, all day, and you're not gonna get no complaint from me. So Empire Strikes Back is definitely an amazing, wonderful film sitting here at my number three spot. Coming in at number two, and if you guys have been paying attention, we have two films left and you know which ones they are. And coming in my number two spot is gonna be Rogue One. This is a film that I was anticipating for years. I knew about this film for probably about three years before it came out watching all the teasers, listening to all the info, looking up all the stuff online about this movie, and I was so excited for it, and I felt like it was going to be amazing, and even when I went to the theaters, I still was blown away and floored with how good this film came out. It's a powerful, gritty war film that is so character-driven, but it's set in the Star Wars universe, and it's just, it's very good. Like it's, you could almost watch this film and it could be just straight up, like I said, a hardcore war film. And you would not even know that, but 
it's in the Star Wars universe. It's really amazing. Right off the bat, they set themselves up for being different from the other films. There's no opening crawl sequence and just the introduction of all these characters. Some of these characters in this film are some of my favorites in the Star Wars universe, like Jen Erso, K2SO, Cassian, and Baze, and Chirrut. They're all amazing characters that I gravitated towards and I was interested with. And just the character arcs are so amazing. Even when we get to the third act and you kind of know where this film's going. Like by the time we get to the third act, you can kind of feel it. But it still has such a powerful payoff. An amazing movie that, like I said, it floored me when I went to see this. And that's why it's so powerful and I love this film. Rogue One, I will always defend it. it is definitely a hardcore favorite of mine and rewatch. I've probably seen this one like 20 times already and I'm thoroughly entertained by it every time I watch it. So Rogue One sitting here at my number two spot. Now my number one film taking the top crown out of all the Star Wars films is gonna be Return of the Jedi. Yes, the conclusion of George Lucas's original trilogy. Return of the Jedi had everything I wanted. It offered me all the right things and had all, even the Ewoks, like that comical stuff, it hit all the right areas for me from the beginning when we get to Luke coming to save Han from the Carbonite and Jabba the Hutt and we get the Sarlacc pit and all that kind of stuff like from there to Endor to the ending battles and oh it's so amazing I was down for the ride of this film and Luke I love his character development and where he's at by the time we meet him in Return of the Jedi and just lay it like you could really feel all their like character chemistry by this film like Carrie Fisher uh, you know Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill, all of them. You can really feel the character development they had in this film and chemistry. And by this time, like they're on for the ride. This this trilogy is taking on all cylinders, and that's why I really love the original trilogy is because I feel like George Lucas did us the best, where he was brought us new hope, introduced us to this universe, and it was amazing. Then gave us some more with Empire Strikes Back, diving into the characters giving us some cool reveals and then capping it off with an amazing third film, Return of the Jedi, giving us some of the best conclusions and powerful payoffs for a movie that I've ever seen. And like I said, when Luke at that end, when he's able to pull his father back from the dark side and, and he helps him take on Palpatine, like it's just such a good payoff. And I'm down for the ride for this film. Like I like the aesthetics, the way Endor looks, the way the Ewoks look, the scouts, like all the designs, the speeder bikes, like all the moments in this film, even with the outdated kind of graphics that it has, I'm still in love with this film, Return of the Jedi. Since I was a kid, it has usually been my favorite. And as the years have gone by, there's been more Star Wars films and I've watched them and some like have come close and everything, but still Return of the Jedi sits comfortable here at my number one spot, my favorite Star Wars film of all time. I hope you guys enjoyed the list. Definitely leave your comments down below. And like I said, tell me about your list and consider subscribing if you like the content that I'm putting out and I'll keep some more videos coming for you. Thanks for hanging out with me. Peace out, guys.